Okay, we should be live. Hopefully you guys can um, hear me. We're going to do a test. Um, we're going to, yeah. I'll, I'll be told if it's good or not. And we will get started in just a minute. So if you guys will sit tight, um, give me about 30 seconds, and then we'll get going. So sorry for the, the delay today. So I've got some... Some frost I'm gonna color really fast while we wait. You guys all had a good um, play here, you good? Sounds good. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. All right, sounds like we're set and ready to go. As soon as I get my real icing mixed, we will get started. Hope you guys are excited for today. I think it'll be kind of fun. Okay, um, while we're getting ready, I want to um, let you guys know if, if there's anybody that's new that hasn't been on before. Uh, the way that things work is we have, um, you should be able to see the screen, the main screen in front of you. And then uh, you should also be able to see a screen of, I guess uh, this is the main shot of the surface. Um, I will control the camera here. So that you guys can see me for a minute. Okay. All right. Um, so you should be able to see the screen, and then you should see on the right side of the screen, um, you should be able to see uh, a chat little icon thing. You click on that, it will open up a chat box, and you guys can um, chat amongst yourselves. So uh, you can go ahead and say hi to everybody. If you have a question for me throughout the training, um, ask the question there. And um, we will try and get all of the questions answered throughout the training. Um, yeah, I think that explains pretty much all of it. I hope you guys enjoy the, the training today. Um, I always like to do something live and fun. Um, it doesn't always work out with guests because they, you know, it takes quite a setup. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we'll get we'll, we'll pause for just a second for recording purposes, and then we'll get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Cake Fu Master Series. Um, I am Amelia Carbine. I am the presenter, and I am the the host today. Uh, two and one. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are. Are excited about today's training? I, I know I am. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, basically, we're going to talk about uh, stencils, uh, how to make a stencil, and a little bit on how to use a stencil, and you know some different ways to use a stencil. So should be fun. Um, also, I announced yesterday a giveaway that we're going to do. Uh, we, we do giveaways all the time, and when I come on, I don't know exactly what to give away. So we have come up with a really fun idea, and I hope you guys are really, you know, I, I think this might catch on and be a, a kind of a big deal. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to give away a one-hour free uh, consultation to somebody. So just a one-on-one. -on -one. Basically, it will be the same setting. Uh, except for you will be on the call with me, and it won't be broadcast to anybody. It will just be one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, so for an hour you have my time. Uh, you can send me questions beforehand if you want me to demonstrate something, or, you know, if you just want to chat or ask questions about anything cake-related. So uh, I will be willing to 
to answer anything for you and chat with you and you know get to know you if I don't already know you. So I think it should be a lot of fun. Um, along with that, we are going to start something that I think I think is going to be fun, um, and I'm really excited for it. I know a lot of people ask me uh, if I'm going to be traveling to teach classes anytime, and they're you know constantly asking, "Are you going to be in my area? Are you going to be in my area?" And um, I I have a lot of kids, and I tend to you know stay stay home, especially during the school year. You know, summertime we like to, to go and play, but that's when everybody's busy with cakes. So anyway, we are going to do an online uh, class with me. And, um, you know, if this goes really well, maybe we'll do this for, you know, future instructors. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Um, but basically what it's going to be, it's going to be a four-week course. And I'm going to have uh, things all lined out, planned out. I'll send a, a course syllabus. Sorry to that. Sorry, hang on just a second. I think it's on the wrong microphone. It's, it sounds OK, but it's not great. I just wanted to. OK, let me something. check something really fast, guys. We want to give you guys the best training we can. So I'll send this. Yeah, if it's on default. So I figured it was early enough that we could probably turn over it. I don't know. Okay. Okay, let's just make it sound all good. All right, you should be able to hear me better, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sorry for the disruption. We'll we'll keep going. Okay, so where was I? Um, the the class, the course. Uh, basically, okay. So starting, it's a four week course. So it's going to be one hour every week. Uh, you would come and just join me live um, on the same setup, except for you'll actually be in the Hangout with me. So you, you'll be um, in, it'll be a group setting. We're going to limit it to nine people, and I won't be doing another one. So if you want, if you want to join a class, um, jump on it as fast as you can, because we're only allowing nine people. So um, let's see. the. The course fee is ninety something. <laughs> Ninety-seven, ninety-nine. I we'll have more information on that. I I know that uh, my my team set the prices. So <laughs> um, we had talked about doing about a hundred and fifty dollar uh, class because for four weeks that's a pretty good deal. But we we thought you know since you guys are our cake food, Followers and friends, we'll we'll cut it down to 99 or 97. I don't know. I'll I'll let you know. <laughs> anyway, somewhere in that $90 range, so that it's under $100. It's a it's a really awesome deal for a four week class. Um. So yeah, basically what it's going to be is we're going to talk about different ways of creating a faux finish on fondant, and every week we're going to go over three different. Um, Techniques and so uh, throughout the four-week course, it's oh, three times four, a dozen. So you've got a dozen different um, ways that you can paint and decorate a cake uh, that that will give you a really cool finish. So I think I think it's going to be really really exciting. Um, a lot of things that I have done. Um, for competition pieces and things like that that I'm going to share with you guys through uh, through this class. So go check it out. Uh, we'll have a link up. I think the link should be up already for you. I think it's down below this screen. Um, there should be a link that will take you to um, to that. Uh, make sure you go check out that link and look at it. That's going to be part of the giveaway. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to yeah check that out. I hope I hope this will be really good, really fun. I it, it's just gonna be awesome. And and one on one. I mean so yeah right now I'm just talking to you guys. I'm just you know it's just me. So when it's all of us together, you guys will actually have your stuff out in front of you. You'll be able to be working 
and you know you'll work right along with me. And if you have any problems, you just jump right in, and we'll answer your questions. You know, and, and it's a whole group setting. There'll be ten total, so nine nine students, and then and then me, and it'll be uh, it's going to be a blast. So I, I think this would be like the first ever live online class as far as cake decorating goes. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to, to do this and, and hope you want to be a part of it. Anyway, okay, so let's get on to our actual training. Um, I wanted to talk about some, some stencils. I did a wedding cake for my niece a, a few weeks ago, um, and the top tier was a hound's tooth pattern. I don't know if you guys can hear. I'm going to click over here so you guys can see that. If you can see. This is my hands to stencil that I've come up with. Um, hope you guys can see that. It is one that I have made myself. And the reason why, <laughs> I hate to admit this, but I did not think ahead very well um, for the top tier of her cake. She wanted a hands to pattern. And you know, I could have gone and bought some uh, some you know, the, the paper sheets that you, you know, the printable sheets, and print something off that would have worked really well. Um, or I could have bought a stencil, which I know that there is a house tooth stencil out there, um, but I wasn't thinking ahead. And by the time I thought about it, it was too late. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, shoot, what do I do? I need this custom design, and and, and I, don't, I don't have the means get what I need to make. And so I thought, okay, that's all. So I ran to, I, I think any craft store has stencil making material. Um, I believe we just ran over to Walmart for this. Um, and it just comes in sheets like this. There, there are three sheets per pack. So, I mean, nice and easy. There is different stencil making material. There's some that's really clear that I know that you can get at Michael's. Um, it's bigger, you know, so if you needed a more overall um, stencil, you could actually you could actually get something bigger. But this was all I needed. And usually when you're doing a cake, um, it, the cake is about, you know, six inches tall, something like that. Or four to six inches is usually the height of a cake, and so I didn't need it to be, you know, any bigger than this. So this is this is what I did, and so I came up with this houndstooth pattern. What I did was I looked online, saw what the pattern looked like, and uh, put it onto some graph paper. So I'm going to actually show you guys how to do a houndstooth pattern on graph paper, just because you know it's fun to know how to do in case you want to do this exact project. Okay, so what I have here, oh, I don't know if you guys can see that, so I'll hold it up for you. Okay, so you should be able to see, this is our houndstooth pattern right here that I put onto graph paper. And th this is on a smaller scale. I'm going to draw one out for you that's bigger so that you can see um, closer up. <laughs> basically how to do it. Okay, so, oh, it's hard to see these lines. Let's see, there we go. If I get it close enough, you can see the lines. All right, so here we go. We're going to do, um, if you can see these lines here, we're going to start and draw dots. And then we're going to connect the dots. So we're going to do four dots across, Come over to the second dot and do one above that. And then we're going to go and do two below that. So we have four across and four down. Hope you guys can see that. OK. And then we're going to do another down row. It's almost like a, a crossword puzzle kind of deal. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we've got five down, and then we're doing five across. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it kind of looks like, you know, L shape and then an inverted L shape. 
And that is the basis of our houndstooth pattern. And so now we're just going to connect the dots. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this top dot, go down, other, you know, the dot next to it, and come over. And then we're going to come diagonally down to these. And then we're going to come across and then come down. It's a geometric shape. But it's a little more, you know, challenging. It's just a square, you know, kind of a deal. So then we're going to take these outer dots and we're going to line them up, and on the outside also. Okay, and then we're going to come in and come up. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And then we're going to do a line from here to here. Oh, if I can draw a straight line, and then from here to here. And then we're going to go down, and then we're going to go over. And that is your basic counts too. So from there, what you're going to do is just start and draw more. So you're going to follow this line down. They go in a row, and they line up that way. So you're going to, again, do three or four down, four across, and then five across. Oh, that's five, and then, oh, I did five. Okay, so ignore that dot. Okay, so then we're going to have this kind of a deal. This one's not as well done, but you get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. Okay, so you're going to do as many down as you want, and then you do as many across as you want. Um, to go across, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to line it up evenly across. Um, your your hound's tooth pattern will start here, uh, where this last one ended, and so your hound's tooth is going to be you know, from there to there, so that it doesn't it doesn't touch all the way, but it is close. Um, you want to get it as close as you can. If you're really, really picky about this pattern, you can do, you know, halfway, you know, kind of thing. Scoot them up a little bit, scoot them closer. But, yeah, that's basically the idea of how you do a houndstooth pattern. I, um, I, this is too big for, for what I needed and for what I think a cake should have. Um, because, you know, it, this right here is most of, uh, a tier. So I mean you might be able to fit in one more on a on a regular sized cake. And so I mean yeah. Hound's tooth tends to be a little bit more on the smaller side and more of them. So this is what I did instead is I did half the size. And I drew out my pattern and just doing four down, four across, five down, five across and then connecting all the dots until I had what I wanted. Okay, so from there, all I did was I lined up my, um, yeah, there's something on there, lined up my stencil on top of the graph paper, and then just traced it out. Um, this graph paper doesn't take pen at all. Uh, well, very well. You have to press really hard if you're going to get an, a pen etched in there. A pencil works just fine. So I'll trace out just one for you. It won't be great because I'm hurrying. Okay, so you can see hopefully right there that you have there. You should be able to see that there is, you know, pencil marking on there. And if you trace that all the way, then you've got your pattern that you'll use to cut out your, your stencil. Okay, so what I've done here is I've already cut out all of my, all of my um, spots, all of my pounds to little patterns. Um, right here, if you can see, um, I'll show you how to cut out this one. Um, I've got an X-Acto blade. I don't know if it's X-Acto brand. Yeah, it's X-Acto brand. <laughs> but just a really, really sharp blade. 
is what you'll need. Um, I've got a, a self-healing mat uh, to, to work on. You don't have to use a self-healing mat if you don't have one, but make sure you're doing it on something that you're not afraid to cut. You know, for example, you could, you know, set it down on the paper and, and cut, but know that you're going to cut through paper. Okay? So, if you... I'm actually going to tear off a bit of this paper. Top of that, sorry. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. It's kind of hard to see against the, the green. All right, so uh, we've got our houndstooth here. Uh, with, a, with an X-Acto blade, it's angled so that you can do nice straight lines if you angle it down this way. If you hold it up, then you're going to be able to get a lot more movement. So um, with this, we want some straight lines, but we, we don't need them very long. So I'm going to angle it a little bit, about like that, so that you guys, or hopefully you guys can see. And just know that, just know that whichever direction your blade is going, that's the direction it's going to go. You can try all you want to to make a, you know to go in this direction or be angled at this direction and going this way. It's not going to it's not going to happen. So whatever direction your your hand is pointing, that's the direction it's going to cut. No matter how hard you try. So with these lines, it's pretty simple. All you do is line it up the way you want it. Angle it, not too low, but not too high, so that you get a nice straight line, and just pull back. And then, again, you know, on the other side, what I do is I do all of my angles that are the same, or all the lines that are the same direction, so that I know that my blade is, oh, shaky hands. So I know that my blade is going in the, the same direction. I'm not moving it and then coming back and trying to get the same direction. I just do them all the same. And then I'll turn it and do all the same, all the same. So I make sure that wherever I have a line going this way, I get them all cut. And then I turn it this way and get them all cut. So there's three different directions on a house too that you're going to have to cut. Okay, so when you're done, then it should just pop out. If you have a spot that's, you know, sticking and not coming loose, then, oh, I'll hold this up higher. And you're just going to take your, um, your exacto blade and just snip it off. So there you've got your pattern. Really easy. It's I mean, it's not, you know, it, it looks nice. It may not be perfect, but it's as good as we need it to be for the project that we're going to be doing. So um, I've actually used this stenciling technique for uh, competition cakes. Um, if, if I find something that I really want to, want to copy, um, and I don't have the means. I, you, you can't always find the exact you know, stencil for the exact project of what you need. So to, to be able to make your own is really nice. OK. OK. All right, so now let me pull this out of the way. Talk about some other stencils. These, these are store-bought stencils. I hope you can see them. I actually found these at Michael's just a, about a week ago. I was so excited. They were really cheap too, like three, four dollars. So I had to buy all the different styles that there were. So anyway, um, these are just your, you know, basic stencils that I've bought at the store that we're going to use a little bit to show a, a few different ideas of what you can do with a stencil. Okay. All right, so I've got a few little pieces of fondant here. 
Oh, there. He took a little damage in the car coming over, so. Is that good enough? Okay. All right, so what we're going to do, I'll start with the hound's tooth pattern because that's what we were working with. And I'm going to airbrush this one because that's what I did uh, with my hound's tooth pattern before. So I'm going to pull out my airbrush. Do the airbrush. Hopefully that's not too loud for you. This is a pretty quiet airbrush. Um, this is the airbrush that uh, Lisa Brazil uh, taught with when I took her class, and she teaches with it on on Crassy. So um, really good airbrush. A Grex is what it is for any of you wondering. Uh, really great airbrush. I didn't really pick a towel or anything. So we're going to have to do some cleaning afterwards. OK, so I've got some blue airbrush color in here. And OK, so normally you'll have a cake that's on its side like this. And I'm just going to light up. I'm going to lightly spray. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting a good angle. Here, I'll try and, and show you guys this way. I'm going to get some funky little. <laughs> Here we go. You want it to be as flat against the surface as you can get it. Otherwise, you know, it, it's going to have really, really soft edges. And this, we want more, you know, crisp, clean edges. But okay, here we go. We're going to just do a light, light coating. Um, the, the less you spray and, you know, the, just, yeah, you can go, go over it a couple of times. Just make sure that you're um, not spraying too much. Because if you spray too much, you're going to end up with drips, um, and that's not pretty. Okay, we're just going to go. Um, kind of hard to do while I'm holding it. <laughs> okay, so from there, we look at it. Hopefully that's up here. Then right we're going to pull it away, and there we have our hands to your pattern. Um, if I wasn't holding it single-handedly, it would probably look a little better. Okay, so we've got that. What if we want to go all the way around the cake? Um, oh, and also lighter spray because you don't want the overspray. Um, that's an issue if you're doing bright colors. All right, so um, what you could do is take this stencil, and where the first holes are, you line them up with the last you might know for the last um, row that you just did. Okay? And then you could airbrush. What I did with my stencil, I don't know if you can see it, but I actually put a uh, line, I, I drew out one more row. Because when I'm airbrushing, if I don't get this pattern perfectly lined up, there could be some overlapping and, you know, funky. So what I did was I just drew it so that I could line up the pencil with that last row. And then I can continue airbrushing and not worry about any kind of, you know, extra overlapping or, you know, weird stuff. So then we can go and do another row. And I'll just try and hurry and get through this. Okay, so there's our other row. And then you just keep on going all the way around your cake, and you end up with your nice airbrushed hound's tooth pattern. Um, if you wanted it to be, you know, as, if you wanted it to be really crisp and clean, and you could go through and pipe all of this, but I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> or you could go through with a paintbrush and find and paint all of it. But again, I wouldn't do that. I think this is nice and it's uniform uh, to a certain extent. Uh, of course, you want to get a more even spray. 
But um, yeah, that's basically the idea of using the my my own stencil that I've cut out. It took me maybe five minutes to cut out all of this. So I mean, right there, you you've got a really good pattern, really good stencil. It's custom made. You know, you can do anything you want with it. I've done you know, scroll work, flowers, other geometric patterns that I just didn't have a stencil available to me. So, oh, I'll turn on the airbrush and put it down here. Okay, so there's one example. Okay, the other, so the next one I'm going to do is, um, I'm sure you guys have all seen stencils that have been uh, brushed over with royal icing. And that's, uh, well, if you haven't, I'm sure you have. <laughs> OK, so I have some royal icing right here that I looked up just minutes before we started. Um, I've actually thinned it down quite a bit. It's not, it's not a really stiff consistency. Um, don't go too thin, otherwise it's going to seep through your, your stencil. But if you go too thick, it's not going to fill in very well. So what we're going to do is you want to try and get this as flat to the surface as possible. Um, working with more of a damp um, fondant is probably better so it can you know, stick just a little bit. I mean, you don't want it wet because then you're going to be peeling away fondant with your stencil. But, you know, it, if it's... Here's what I do. <laughs> okay, so I will make my cake. I will make sure it's perfectly... I mean, you want a really, really smooth finish on this cake because any kind of divot in your cake is going to be where you're going to have mess-ups in your, in your royal icing. So perfectly smooth finish, stick it in the freezer and let it freeze. Or, or refrigerator, I guess, it, you know, as long as your refrigerator is cold enough that it gets nice and stiff. Then um, you pull it out, it should be really nice and stiff. Once it starts to cool for, I mean, just even a minute, usually, I know a lot of people deal with this, um, and you can use it to your advantage this time, is it starts getting a little bit damp, the moisture content from taking it from the refrigerator or freezer out into the open air, it, there's the condensation. And so you can actually use that to your advantage with stencils. Um, so basically what you're going to do is, mine's going to slide around a little bit, but you'll hold it against the cake, just take little bits of royal icing at a time and start just smoothing it on. You don't want to go over it too many times because that will um, start forcing it down in through and you don't want it to be forced down underneath your stencil. So one or two swipes across is all you really want to do. Don't mess with it too much. Um, make sure you get all the spots. Try and get a nice even coating. Okay. And then you guys get the, the idea. Okay. If you let it sit for just a second until it is starting to firm up, but you don't want it to be too firm. Uh, royal icing dries really fast. And so if you let it get crunchy, you're going to start pulling away. If you uh, pull it away right away, then it could leave some um, the points. You know, when you're piping, you usually get points. Uh, when you pull away the stencil too soon, you can get that same idea of the, the royal icing pulling away like you would with a piping bag and doing your dots. You get those points. So let it sit for just a second. Let it firm up. Maybe a minute. Not, not very long, though. And then you're going to kind of pull away. Nice and easy. And then you've got, oh, can you see that? There you go. 
I don't know if you guys can see all the detail that's in there. It's actually really, um, really crisp lines and, and really good for, for being a royalizing stencil. Um, I know a lot of people have issues with getting the clean lines with a, a royalizing stencil. So there are some tips and tricks uh, to help you get a nice clean finish. So there's that. Okay, and then our last one I wanted to show you was um, there's this cute little flowery one that I found. Okay, so this is going to be something that you would probably do in panels and place on the cake in panels. You, it will be really hard to do on the case. Um, and you want the royal, or you want your fondant to be nice and fresh. This has actually been sitting uh, for a couple hours this morning, so hopefully we get the the design that we want. But you're going to set your stencil down, and you're going to just take the rolling pin, and you're going to press down. And this is going to create um, a, an indent and a texture with just your sheet. Okay, so we're still kind of fresh. I, oh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see. Let's see if we'll focus on it. At an angle, maybe. There you go. You can see at that angle, over here it didn't come through very well. But over here you can see that there is a pattern that's just indented on that, um, which is really cool. If you want to take it a step further, you could actually, before you pull your stencil off, um, I just wanted to show you guys, but before you pull your stencil off, see if I can line it up again. Okay. It's not going to be perfect, but, okay. We'll roll it one more time just to hopefully get. Okay, you don't want to do too much rolling. You just kind of press. Um, you don't, you know, roll back and forth, back and forth. It's just kind of, you know, wiggle it. Oh, I'm, I'm wiggling this in the screen, sorry. So you kind of just wiggle it a little bit here, and, you know, and kind of um, release as you move. And then just wiggle it a little bit more. Move, wiggle it, move, wiggle, move, wiggle. Um, and then you can do just one little overall light so it evens everything out. If, you go, if you're going back and forth and back and forth, you're, this um, stencil is going to slide, and then you're going to end up with double lines. Um, so there's that. We may end up with double lines because I'm going over this twice, but... <laughs> Alright, I wanted to show you guys an, another option of what you can do with this um, stencil. I've got just some... just a powdered color. Um, you can use a petal dust. It can be luster dust. If you do just a plain luster dust, this is really, really cool because um, you take just a pearl dust and, and dip it in the pearl dust and just go along the stencil like this and you pull it away and then you've got some that's shiny and some that's matte finished and it really makes it pop. It's really cool. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use green just so that you guys can see a little bit better than just a luster finish. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get our, our dust, kind of tap it off a little bit. You don't want too much on your brush. Um, and then we're going to just kind of pounce a little bit. And we're just going to kind of pounce. You can rub just a little bit as you're going along, but don't rub too much. You don't want to move the stencil. Okay. So we're going to come here and do a little bit over here. And you can play with this all you want. I and mean, you could you could actually color in um, all the different spots, different colors. Uh, you can do you can do just about anything with this. It's really cool. I mean, you can have darker areas in here, lighter areas over here, you know, or just an accent, you know, say these little daisy type flowers, you want to accent that little flower right there, you can go ahead and 
just exit that little flower. You know? So when you pull it away, you'll see a really you know, crisp detail that's got some dimension to it. You can see the texture to it. And you know, it, and it leaves a really nice, just dust to finish in a really nice pattern. So I could have done this whole thing, and it would have been, you know, that nice overall pattern design. But there you go. There's a, there's another one. So, yeah, pretty much four, <clears throat> four different ways that you can use a stencil. Um, I, well, and with this one, you can go all different directions, and uh, it's just. Stencils are really versatile. They're really a great tool to have and use. Um, <clears throat> if you can't find the exact stencil you want, now you can make one. So, okay. Um, I think that covers the, the training part. We will talk about our, um, let's see if we have any questions for you. Oh, someone's already asked to say, oh, by the way, as I'm asking these questions, um, these are questions that have been asked on the chat box. So if you have a question for me and, and are looking for an answer for something, go ahead and type a question in the chat box, and we'll be able to read those and, and answer your questions. Um, <clears throat> there is a little bit of a delay, so get your question in as soon as you can uh, in order for me to, to get it answered. Okay, so our first question is, um, I have seen... Oops, sorry. I have seen someone tape it to the cake. Uh, have you done that, and does that work to keep it straight? I've never taped it. Um, I know that there are people that have. But I, I tend to work with a stencil that's small enough that I can just hold it. And especially if you, if you do the way that I said to have it in your freezer, pull it out of the freezer, so you know the surface is a little bit tacky. It'll stay on really well. I mean, I've never, I've never dealt with a, a stencil sliding around on me um, using using that method. So I don't, I don't know. Oh, you could tape it. Um, there is the issue of you know food safety, whatever. Make sure it's non toxic at least. <laughs> um, <laughs> Someone asked, aren't you concerned about painting, uh, spray painting on your beautiful wooden table? It's food coloring, it'll wash off. <laughs> uh, and there wasn't very much overspray, so I, I think I know who asked that question. <laughs> All right, so uh, any more questions that we might have? Hopefully we'll have them rolling in. Um, since there is a delay, I may not be getting the questions. Uh, okay, um, here's one coming. Let me take a second. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was the question. That was my camera is bouncing, and I knew that. I'm sorry. <laughs> With the delay. Okay, so while we're waiting for more questions, um, I will talk more about this class that we're going to do. Uh, basically, it's a lot like this, except for you would be on with me, and there would be um, nine, nine other people um, with a full class. It'll be one-hour sessions every week. They'll be on Tuesdays uh, at, at this time, so if you're used to coming and watching all the, the Kiku trainings, it, this will be a really convenient time for you. Uh, so we'll just do it on Tuesdays. We're kind of switching our trainings over to Wednesdays. Uh, for the most part, um, unless the trainer has conflict in schedule, we will be doing our trainings on Wednesdays. Um, and so if you uh, sign up for this class, it'll be on Tuesdays, which will be uh, nice and convenient for, for most of you, I hope, um, at the same time. So you'll just come on. We'll all get on and hang out together. We'll just, you know, talk. We'll have fun. We'll, yeah learn some stuff, <laughs> hopefully. Okay. All right, someone said, since I froze up, can anyone um, 
Do you do the roll in-depth technique after fondant is on the cake or before placing over the frosting? Okay, so um, what I said earlier was this is something that really you would want to do in panels. Um, it would be a little bit more difficult to do on a cake. You know, say you have your cake, um, you want to do it while the fondant is still fresh, which means that your cake and the frosting underneath is not going to be, um, and, you know, might be flexible and you might get some indenting that you don't want. So, and, you know, and to roll along the surface of a cake, you're going to have a really hard time getting the amount of pressure that you need along the outside of the cake to be able to roll it and get the indent that you want. You could um, just fold the stencil over and do your powder color. Uh, just make sure that you're holding it nice and steady. Uh, you may not get as clean of a, of a finish. Make sure you do more pouncing than you do rubbing. Uh, if you so if you want to do it on the cake itself, you can do that with the, you know, with the powder colors. But I wouldn't recommend trying to do the indenting on the side of the cake. Uh, that's something that you would, you know, you roll out a strip or a panel and, you know, you would wrap it around the cake. Or you can place it as, um, you could use it as, you know, like a drapery that has a, a texture to it, which is really cool, which is something I did for one of my competition pieces. And I believe that um, uh, Carrie Vincent is the one who, who originally came up with the idea of doing stencil and then uh, turning it into panels. Um, I think that's in her, in her book. Um, so yeah, if you want more information on that, you can go look in her book for that. Um, so yeah, but so yeah, you could stencil with the with the colors on the side. I wouldn't recommend doing the texture on the side. Roll them out as panels. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Do you mix your own royal icing or you use a pre-made mix? I mix my own. It's so easy to make. Um, basically, you just. I I mean, I do use. Uh, a meringue powder. I don't use egg whites um, I, unless I need something really, really firm. Uh, but yeah, it, this for this uh, purpose, just you know, the Wilton uh, recipe is is all you really need. It's nothing really challenging to to stencil on some royal icing. So basically, it was. Three tablespoons of meringue powder to about four cups of powdered sugar, and then five to six tablespoons of water, um, and then adding a little bit of water if you need to to thin it out to what you need it to be. So uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so let's see our next question. All right. Um, I'm sorry about the, the camera angle bouncing back and forth. I didn't realize it was doing that. Okay. Um, someone said, since I'm a vegetarian, I wanted to know if I could use buttercream instead of royal icing when using a template. Um, I think you could. You would want to make sure that you've got a really, um, a really uh, fine. Your your basic buttercream, you know the the Crisco variety where you just dump the powdered sugar in. A lot of times the powdered sugar is uh, a little more grainy than you want it to be, and it doesn't mix well with the or well enough with the with the fat to be able to spread really evenly. And so that might cause a problem with your stencil. I would recommend if you're going to do a like a buttercream, I would recommend doing. Um, I uh, well, if you're a vegetarian, I don't know if you would use butter. If you if you do use butter, I would recommend uh, like a uh, IMBC Italian meringue buttercream or SMBC a Swiss meringue buttercream, because that way um, the sugar melts 
and and it's not going to have that uh, that same graininess that you're going to get with uh, with the uh, regular, you know, Americanized <laughs> buttercream. <laughs> I guess is the word. Okay. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Is a Swiss meringue or, or an Italian meringue buttercream, and I think that would work just fine. Um, I don't. It won't set as well as a royal icing will. So you have to be really careful afterwards not to, you know, bump into it and mess it up. Okay. All right. Um, someone says, if you imprint your gold fondant before placing on the cake, won't you lose most of the design when you're stretching fondant over the cake to get smooth sides? Yes. This is. Um, uh, She's basically asking you uh, stencil the whole uh, piece of fondant and then drape it over the cake and then smooth it out. Yeah, you're going to lose a lot of that indentation, if not all of it, um, by the time you get it all smoothed out. What the way that I um, was was meeting, and I, I'm sorry if I didn't make this clear, is you would roll out strips. Of it, and and you would, you know, roll out indent the strip, uh, and then place it as a panel along the outside of your cake. Um, you could also do a top surface if you want, um, or you could do little strips of panels. You know, something something along the lines of this. Let it dry for a little while, and then just place it on your cake. Uh, if you want to have some sort of you know, straight panel design. It really depends on the, the, the design of your cake. Um, so, um, if you wanted to do uh, the the draping that I was talking about wasn't to drape over the cake and smooth out as your as your covering. The draping I was meaning was to roll out a piece of fondant and do your stenciling, gather it up, and drape it along. The cake as as more of a as more of a you know a curtain drapery kind of a thing that you that you see on cakes all the time. So or you could do this and make it into a bow, which would be really cute. Um, so yeah, there's different options, but rolling it out, doing the the indentation, and then covering your cake and smoothing it out. That's not going to work all that well, so I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. All right. Let's see if I missed any questions. Okay. Uh, someone asked about the giveaway. I will be explaining the giveaway just a little bit better. Um, in just a minute. Let's see if we have any more questions. I I don't have the questions up in front of me, so if, if I don't see them, I'm I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're going to move on to the the rest of the training. We'll um, we'll finish up here because we're just about out of time. So uh, let's get on to the giveaway. Um, I want to make sure that we have uh, that lined up. If I can get a hold of Bobby. Okay, so I want you to go to the link that's on, you know, down below your screen. Um, and the the link down below your screen. There should be um, uh, just that link. Click on that link. Go over to the page uh, where it, it talks about that the class that um, that you have the opportunity to be a part of, and we need to uh, find the let's say week three, the first thing we're going to learn on week three. Okay, so first thing we're going to learn on week three, uh, and then. Email that to me at cakefood.com at gmail.com. Or cake, mm -hmm. 
Okay, just email it to my personal one, Amelia at cakefood.com. So that's A M E L I A at cakefood.com. Sorry, I didn't have the email address right in front of me. <laughs> okay, so Amelia, A M E L I A at cakefood.com. And you're going to email me the. Um, you're going to email me the third or the first thing that we're going to learn on week three. So go ahead and, and email that over, and I will look for a winner. Um, while we're doing that, I will explain the, the giveaway a little bit better. Uh, basically, the giveaway is going to be a one-hour uh, consultation with you. It's going to be um, whatever you want to talk about. It's going to be. Uh, just me and you, we're going to get on the hangout setup like this. Um, if you guys have seen the trainings before, usually I will have somebody else on here with me. And, um, and we can talk amongst ourselves. And we're talking you know, to you guys um, and sharing that way. So that's basically the way it will be. You will be on the call with me, and, and we will be able to talk. It won't be broadcast to anybody else. It will just be us on this call. So you can, you know, ask me any, you know, questions that you may not want to ask in a, a live setting with everyone else. Um, you can ask questions about anything cake related, you know, business, technique, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, and and we can just do an hour long session, whatever you want to talk about. Um, if you want me to come up with some ideas on things that we can talk about and do, we can absolutely do that. Uh, otherwise, we'll you know, just do whatever you want. And it, I guess uh, someone asked if it could be through Skype or Google Hangout. I mean, we could do Skype. I, I'm very comfortable with using Skype, so we could do that also. Um, or we could use the Google Hangout setup like this. So whatever, whatever you're more comfortable with, we can do. Um, for the giveaway, you can actually, um, we'll work together to schedule a time. For the class, we have the times already scheduled. And also, for anybody who signs up for the class, this is kind of a, kind of a bonus that I'm throwing in there. Um, anybody that signs up for the class will have the opportunity to, um, to actually uh, purchase one of these one-hour consultations. Um, I believe that we're going to give that uh, a $49 value. And so, um, but only the people who sign up for the class will be able to have that opportunity. So, so it's kind of a, if, if you want the one consultation, sign up for the, the, you know, by the class, and you'll get the, the class and the consultation. And if you, if, yeah, it's kind of an add-on bonus, just for the people who sign up for the class. So, OK. We should have our winner lined up. Um, I haven't looked at it yet, so I'm going to take, we'll say the, since it's the third week, we'll take the third person to sign up. I'm going to move this a little bit. Just a minute. Yeah. OK. I should have this up already, and I didn't. Bear with me for a second. Okay, and it looks like the person would be Mary J. Thompson. So Mary Thompson, you have won the one hour consultation with me. So that's exciting. Um, I will email you, and we will get something lined up. Congratulations. Uh, for those of you that uh, would like the chance to be able to um, have this class with me, um, I, you know, I, I don't do a lot of traveling. I, I do sometimes, you know, when, when, it, uh, when things work out. I, I like to stay home with my baby, so. <laughs> so this is my way of teaching a class. So if you want a class for me, uh, this is a really good opportunity um, to, to come on live. You don't have to leave your house. You can just uh, 
worthwhile model for me, well, I, in, a, in a group setting, but we will all be there live. You can ask the questions. It'll be great. So anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the training today. I hope you uh, got some good ideas and, and information, and uh, hope to see you guys in the class. And uh, we will talk to you next week. Bye.